Hello and welcome to this video on a lesson that the world has learned from history. You may have seen videos or heard stories of isolated tribes in parts of the world ranging from India to Brazil and Oceania. Part of this is the fact that these peoples have not made contact with the rest of the world. Another part is that people are not to make contact with them. The why and what for are interesting from a range of views. It includes health and safety, communication, culture, and so on. To understand why this phenomena is, we need to go back several hundred years. In the race to colonize the world, most of the European countries began going across the globe. From Europe to North America, the shortest point from mainland to mainland is a little over 4.3 million kilometers. To South America, it's 5.68 million kilometers. This in conjunction with the time frame that's involved, the different peoples separated from each other, leading to isolated and discrete populations. Each went their own way, developed different cultures and languages. More importantly for the race to colonize are the diseases that developed alongside these cultures. As was shown when Cortes invaded the Aztecs, Mesoamerican peoples did not have smallpox and other diseases as part of the normally occurring pathogens. When Cortes arrived, he and the other Spaniards brought smallpox and it decimated the peoples. It killed approximately 6.4 million people in one year, about 40% of the Aztec population. This occurred because the Aztecs had no resistance to smallpox. Similar events occurred in North America, Africa, Asia, and Australasia. This historical allegory is one reason behind the rules, laws, and policies that leave the isolated the tribes of the world well and truly alone. Imagine what happens if in the current state of the world we were to make contact with an isolated tribe. Maybe a few hundred people at most, if not far fewer. It would decimate their population if it did not kill many there would at least be a vast number of injuries, complications, and impact on the society at wide. We can see some of that today with limitations on society, an impact by the CCP virus on a developed first world, let alone an undeveloped tribal country, group, society. It's hard to describe just how small these groups are in the context of what they would be fighting against. To a certain degree, the opposite is also true. At least, for a time, a number of tribes in Asia Minor and the Pacific particularly were engaging in activities that could be considered cannibalism. They were developing prion diseases, among others. And these are diseases that could be acquired. There are also issues of the various pathogens that could be developing within these cultures that we, as a wider world that's been globalized, have not encountered yet. This is one reason why we do not make contact with isolated populations like the Amazonian tribes. While we could cause harm to them, there are instances where they could cause harm to you or us. And this goes beyond the simple pathologies. This is well demonstrated by the Sentinelese, a tribe on the isolated North Sentinel Islands in the Bay of Bengal. This tribe is well known for being extremely territorial and aggressive to strangers. There have been a number of deaths associated with them. This ranges from tourists doing stupid things through to religious zealots trying to preach. Clearly, Jehovah's Witnesses should not knock on that door. Either way, these people died. The tribe, as of the high point, stands at 98 individuals and more recently it's estimated to be between 12 and 16. Given the reclusive nature of them though, it's rather hard to tell with any accuracy. As with the Aztecs, introducing diseases to these people could lead to the population dying out entirely, given how few individuals exist according to most recent data. If you were to reduce this population even further, it would get a lot worse. Then we need to consider the fact that they are aggressive and therefore may respond violently to any attempt to contact them. And the next major hurdle to interacting with isolated tribes is a matter of cultural divides. As was recently noted in Brazil, where an official was killed by one of the very tribes 
they were involved in the protection of. They died from an arrow injury when they were approaching an isolated tribe. This was partially a product of both Brazil's approach to isolated tribes and how the modern world deals with the very different hunter-gatherer cultures. One used their field of crops as a source of income and property. The other used it as a bountiful gift from nature. When you have two conflicting views over something like this, it inevitably leads to violence, and this is one of the theories behind what happened with the Brazil official. This is compounded by the way businesses such as mines, forestry companies, and more deal with the tribes. They are far less patient than farmers and similar. This means the tribes generally do not appreciate mass deforestation and respond to this with violence quite often. The clash of two different cultures is stark. As Brazil has tried to do, it's not exactly easy to try and reconcile these two differences, and in many cases impossible. Brazil effectively set up exclusion zones around these tribes in order to protect them from the outside world, and to a certain degree protect the outside world from these tribes. This is also compounded by the fact that they have a different language, and understanding what is being communicated could be very difficult. That means one of the most basic ways around these issues of aggression and this understanding is not possible. Then we should consider about the issues, at least culturally, where we've seen it in other countries. Take Australia for instance. Australia is notorious, for lack of a better word, for how it was colonised initially. It was called Terra Nullis, or No One Owns This Land despite there being an indigenous population. The British occupied it on the basis of terra nullis because there was no British or developed idea in the indigenous populations for the concept of land ownership, or at least not as the British would recognise it in the indigenous peoples. This meant when they got there, they simply said, there's no one here, it's now ours. A particularly British thing to do. Because of the issues associated with communication and the cultural barriers of two very different cultures, one being largely hunter-gatherer, and the other a global superpower at the time that was busy colonising places, they could not reconcile the problem, and it led to many issues, and it took nearly 200 and some years to have that issue resolved. This leads to another problem. How do you take a Stone Age tribe, or hunter-gatherers and similar, and insert them into a society with electricity, internet, medicine and rocketry, so on and so forth? It is something that would be seen as magic or godlike powers by comparison. This is exactly what was thought when Cortes invaded the Aztec Empire, and similar occurrences have happened in other invasions of sorts. Even in the modern world, where you have one developed country with citizens engaging in tourism with another developed country with tourism. This culture shock is seen in some cases of tourism and is exemplified by Paris Syndrome. This is a form of culture shock for Japanese tourists in Paris. It's such a big issue for them that they actually have to have a dedicated 24-hour help phone line number at their local consulate or embassy to support Japanese tourists who are affected by it. It is a sense of disappointment which is so strong when they visit Paris because they feel that Paris is not as beautiful as they expected it to be and the culture is not what they expected. It can cause psychiatric and physical symptoms. It is nowhere near as bad as what a Stone Age tribe would experience being forcefully thrown into the modern world. And to a certain extent, this is the problem with the modern world interacting with these isolated tribes. There's no way for us to interact with them on a level where it makes sense to them for what they're seeing. In fact, there's a movie that perfectly exemplifies this called The Gods Must Be Crazy, and it demonstrates the very problem of bringing a isolated tribe into the modern world through the simple occurrence of a glass bottle. 
Finally, up until the 80s, the Brazilian government has tried to establish peaceful contact with many of these tribes. Their plan had been to try and assimilate them into mainstream society. They began with the simplest or at least most practical of ways, offering them metal tools. Remember, these are largely Stone Age societies, flint spears and arrows, basic bows, very much seasonal eating. There is no advanced technology, and the idea of a metal tool would be amazing to them. The metal tools were only meant to bring them into a particular area so they could engage in contact, effectively bait in a trap. The outcome for this is rather foreseeable though. It would often lead to violence and disease amongst the tribe's people who had gone there and then gone back home again. The introduction of outside tools as well also led to more violence. Again, the gods must be crazy perfectly exemplifies this issue. This whole situation, in simple summary, is why we cannot make contact with these isolated tribes at present. It's simply not possible with the way they are and the way the world has developed to try and incorporate them into society. And, for lack of a better phrase, they are almost better being forgotten, so as not to harm them, or worse yet, destroy them in their entirety through attempting to be beneficent. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.